Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Um, I am going to be continuing on, or children of Yahuwah and the truth. I'm going to be continuing on with the action of story, Yahuwah's redemptive story. Um, we are on video number. I love you all. And um, our poor buddy here has a seasonal eye infection. Um, he's got dryness around his eye. And it's been a struggle because last year the vet wasn't so expensive. But this year they want like $300, $400. And it's just ridiculous. And we can't afford it. And we're trying our best with this this cheap liquid stuff for his eye but it, it's still not clearing up if you can see his he's got a dry eye and um okay. i just wanted to show you guys yeah. like it i'm not getting rid of them i just want to get it fixed. we're just we want to get it fixed but no matter how hard we, I work, we can't afford the vet right now no matter how hard he tries like to work, to work. Yeah, he's he works for doordash but it's very iffy because we live in a small town, so he doesn't really make very much from it. The other jobs are just every other week. Yeah. Five so, weeks later, it's just getting so we are on video number 26 of Yahuwah's Redemptive Story. Um, passing the Mantle, based on 1 Kings 19:19 19, 19 through 21. Yahuwah has encouraged Eliyah on the top of Mount Carmel, but Eliyah needs a successor. A young, earnest man plows his parents' fields. Phew! Now that the rains have come again, the fields are fertile again and ripe for plowing. A good thing, too. Our stores were out about used up, but the, the Adoni takes care of his faithful. Eliyah, the Adoni's prophet... What a, without a word, Eliyah takes off his mantle and places it on Elisha's sweaty shoulders. Does this mean? Thank you for calling me, Eliyah. Let me just say goodbye to my parents. Well, do what you must, but Yahuwah's work won't wait very long. Elisha returns home and gives... A farewell feast for his family and friends. He slaughters his own his oxen and burns his plow to cook the meat. <clears throat> eat my eat my friends and wish me well on my new journey. Yahuwah has called me. I have to obey. This burned up plow represents my old life. It must be destroyed so I can follow my new life with Yahuwah. That's all well and good, Alisha, but we could have sold that. I have to burn my plow behind me, 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 Father. I know life as a prophet will be hard, and I don't want the temptation to come back to my old life. You're giving up a life of comfort to follow Yahuwah's call. I'm proud of you, son. When he, when he made, when he has made his farewells, Elisha sets out to follow Eli, Eliyah. Bella, don't do that with the carpet, Bean. Okay. The Grapes of Envy, based on 1 Kings 21. While Eliyah and Elisha do Yahuwah's work in the countryside, King Ahab makes a surprise to visit one of his subjects. Naboth, I want to buy this vineyard, or if you like, I'll give you another one in exchange for it. I'm sorry, O king, but our family has owned this vineyard for many years. It would not be right to sell it to someone outside the family. You may also find that it is not right to displease your king. Bella, you don't do that with a carpet. Hey! Like, like a spoiled child who can't have his own way, Ahab returns to the palace. What's the matter? Are you ill? No, I want Naboth's vineyard, but he won't sell it to me. What do you mean? Who's the king here? Don't worry, I will give you the vineyard. Quickly, Isabel writes a letter to the city leaders, but she signs the king's name to it. Find two, scound find two scoundrels and have them accuse Naboth of blaspheming against Yahuwah, then stone Naboth to death. When the elders receive the letter, but Naboth, but, but Naboth is a good man. This letter may say Ahab, but it's the work of Isabel. 
do we dare disobey these orders if, if they came from the queen? Not if we value our lives. No one can save Naboth if Isabel is out to get him. Yahuwah can. The elders carry out Isabel's instructions exactly as, as she has commanded. At their hands and her orders, an honorable man is wrongly executed. Naboth is stoned to death in the streets, and stray dogs lick his blood off the stones. When Isabel gets the report of Naboth's death, she hurries to the king. It's your lucky day, Naboth. Naboth is earth. It's your lucky day. Naboth is dead. I'm giving you his vineyard. Good, I'll take it at once. I love getting what I want, and I didn't even have to pay for it. But as King Ahab is gloating over his new vineyard, Eliyahu the prophet of Yahuwah suddenly appears. If it isn't my old enemy. Yes, and I have a message from Yahuwah. Did you kill to get your will? Then you will suffer as Naboth suffered, and so will your wife, Isabel. A bad disguise based on 1 Kings 22. For most of Ahab's reign in Yasharal, Jehoshaphat was ruled, has ruled Yehuda. For years, the divided kingdoms of Yasharal and Yehuda have warred with each other. But Jehoshaphat has been a good king who honors the Adoni and has even made peace with Yasharal. Jehoshaphat also lets his son marry Ahab and Isabel's daughter, Athaliah. One day, when the king of Yehuda comes for a visit, Ahab asks him a kingly favor. The Arameans took one of my cities. Will you, drive, will, will you help me drive them out? Your war is my war, Ahab, but you should seek the Adonis' advice first. Ahab calls in 400 of his prophets. When he asks them if he should go to war, all of them give him the answer he wants to hear. Attack and be victorious. You will you will gore the, the Arame Arameans like a bull on a rampage. Hmm. You, don't you have any prophets of the Adonai to ask? Well, there is one, but I hate him. He only ever prophesies bad things about me. Yeah, okay. Unwillingly, some... Summoned the prophet. Okay, so Ahab unwillingly summons the prophet Micaiah, duly appears before the king. I was sure he met Eliyah. Oh, most sincerely, my honored king, you will definitely win this battle. Attack and be victorious. Don't be sarcastic. Tell the truth. You want the truth? All these prophets are liars, and the Arama Arameans will certainly kill you. May I go now? See, I told you he hates me. Take him away. Lock him up. You'll get, you'll get out of prison when I return safely. If you return safely, then I'm not a prophet of the Adonai. I mean it. As King Ahab prepares for battle against the Aramean, Invaders. He worries about Micaiah's prophecy. I'll disguise myself so the enemy won't recognize me. Ahab is right. The enemy doesn't recognize him. The Aramean soldiers focus their attack on King Jehoshaphat. But in the, in the heat of battle, a stray arrow strikes Ahab. Drag me out of the fighting. I've been wounded. But the battle is so fierce around them that his driver is unable to retreat. Ahab faints, drops, or er, er, propped up for hours as he slowly bleeds to death in his own chariot. When the battle finally ends for the day, look, the king is dead. Without their king, the Yashraelites retreat and, and the campaign fails. King Ahab's body is taken back to his capital for burial, and his chariot is taken outside the city to be washed. Micah Yah's prophecy and the first part of Eliyah's prophecy has come true. Chariots of Fire, based on 2 Kings 2, 1 through 18. Ahab's king, kingdom passes to his sons, but Queen Isabel remain, remains the power behind the throne. Rem, uh, during the reign of her second son, Yoram, Eliyah receives a message from Yahuwah. 
The Adonai has told me to go to the Jordan. Stay here, Elisha. No, as long as you live, I will follow you, Eliyah. So they set out together. Yahuwah has revealed to both of them that this is Eliyah's last journey, but they, they say nothing. When they reach the Jordan River, Eliyah strikes, strikes it with his cloak, and the waters part. They walk across the dry land. On the other side of the river, Eliyah stops as if he has reached the end of his journey. Is there anything you want to ask you before Yahuwah takes me away? Yes, let me inherit your spiritual power. Only Yahuwah can grant that. If you are able to see what Yahuwah does next, then, you'll, then your request will be answered. Okay. For a moment, all is still. Then, my father... When Eliyah's mantle drops from heaven, or Shamayim, it confirms that the miracle Elisha witnessed means he is to carry on Eliyah's work by himself. When Elisha goes back to the Jordan River, he strikes the water with Eliyah's mantle and the waters part. Yahuwah's power has come to me. Toda Rabbah, my Adonai, or thank you, my Adonai. A group of young prophets are waiting on the other side of the river, and they witness Elisha's parting of the waters. We know Yahuwah has taken Eliyah's spirit, and now we know that you are truly his heir. Should we look for Eliyah's body so we can give him a proper burial? Look all you like. There will be nothing for you to find. The prophets spread the news throughout Yasharal that Eliyah has been taken up to heaven, or Shamayim, and Elisha has taken his place. A rash of miracles based on 2 Kings 2 19 through 24 and 4 and 6 1 through 7. News that Eliyah is gone spreads quickly in the palace of Samaria. Queen Isabel gladly passes the news on to her son. With Eliyah out of the way, we can rule Yasharal as we please. Under the queen's evil influence, men feel free to take advantage of those who have opposed the queen. Your husband owed me money when he was alive. Pay me what he owed or I'll take your sons as slaves. Slaves? No! Oh, Yahuwah, what can I do? Sadly, there's only one thing you can do. Luckily, your boys will make wonderful slaves. Remember, the law is on my side. In desperation, the woman runs to Elisha. My sons! The money lender will take them as slaves tomorrow unless I give him the money my husband owed him, and I have no money. I'm down to my last jar of oil. Don't worry, I promise you, you will have a surprise for the money lender when he comes. Borrow all the empty jars you can from the neighbors, pour your oils into the jars, and trust Yahuwah to help you. This is every jar in the village, mother. And they're all full of oil that we can sell. I'll pay off that wicked man and still have money to take care of, the, of you boys. It's a miracle. With a grateful heart, the woman thanks Yahuwah for saving her sons. Then she sells the oil and waits for the money lender early the next morning. Where are my slaves? I told you to be ready for me. I am ready for you. Come out, boys. Here's the money we owe you. Take it and never come back. Elisha performs many miracles to protect Yahuwah's people and Yahuwah's name. To save a village, he purifies a polluted well. Just like Eliyah before him, he raises a young boy from the dead. And when a gang of young men threaten him, we'll send, we'll send you up to heaven like your master, Baldi. Elisha calls down the curse of Yahuwah, and two bears come to his defense, mauling 42 of them. When the company of prophets is building a settlement for Elisha to live in, an accident happens. 
Oh no, it was borrowed. I'd have to be a slave for a lifetime to pay it back. Elisha miraculously makes the heavy iron axe head float. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Next time we will be reading A Miracle for a Rash. Um, Invisible Army. Lepers Under Siege. Um, and that is it. Um, we're doing pretty good. We're getting through, we're getting through this story. I hope you, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope your children are learning new things from it and are get, are gaining interest so that they will study the scriptures of truth themselves. Um, that is the reason why I read this for you guys. Um, I'm really worried about our dog. I'm just hoping, I'm hoping that... No, now you're going to make me all worried because I thought it was getting better. Well, it's dry. It's dry and it's in it. And it's, he's been going like this today. I'm trying so. to fix it. I'm trying to do it as much as I can, but the vet wants The vet so wants much. way too much money. Like, it's, it's, like, it's you gotta take robbery. Him in you got to take him in once and then take him in again. And then you, you can pay for the time that you take him in. And then you got to pay for the next time you take him in. And it's... It, it's two hundred every time. It used to only be fifty bucks, sixty bucks. Yeah, it used to be up. like sixty bucks for the checkup, and they'd give him a pill for like seventy-five bucks. And now because it's skyrocketed because of inflation, well, and it's ridiculous. Burnt, yeah, and the because other. the other vet in our, the biggest vet in our in our town, burnt down last year, so. That is why prices went up because yeah, we only have one vet to go to in our town now. So. I love you all, and I hope you all are doing well. Um, and please pray for Roscoe that his eye will heal. Hallelujah, 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 shalom and blessings. I love you all with an everlasting love as our Abba Yahuwah loves each and every one of us. Toda Rabbah.